the four people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for that uh, introduction, uh, George. Um, I think, you know, for those who don't know me, that I was a founding member of Merseyside. It's important to know that I was a founding member of Merseyside Stop the War Coalition. Um, and that I led an industrial dispute um, in the 80s that, uh, you know, turned into, was turned into a movie, Glenda Jackson played me, and, and I fought for women in sexual, against sexual harassment, and that the dispute that I led, uh, led to changes in the law that protect women in the workplace to this day. I was also targeted by the Labour Party through the pages of the Jewish Chronicle. You know, the usual thing, uh, which attacks people in our movement. And um, I re reported them to Ipso, and the, the Jewish Chronicle was forced into print in the longest adjudication any newspaper has ever had to publish for the lies that they told about me. And I also took a libel case against them and uh, settled in my favour. Bravo. I'm also proud to say I'm the uh, Secretary of the Merseyside uh, Pensioners Association. More importantly, above all this, I'm just one of the thousands and thousands of activists across the country who fought against the war in Iraq and uh, uh, Afghanistan, who will be fighting against this war in the Ukraine as well. And when the, when the uh, blinds are taken off, we'll be fighting against um, NATO as well. <laughs> Liverpool knows the horrors of war. You know, we were the, the second most bombed city after the Second World War. I grew up, people my age grew up playing in bomb sites. And we only started to rebuild our city in 2008 when we won Capital of Culture. And we started to rebuild ourselves then. That's why we were an absolutely tremendously powerful anti-war movement in Merseyside. We were really proud to send 30 coaches, and I think we we're the only city that sent hired a train when we didn't have a penny in the bank, and we had to pay 14,000 to sign a check for 14,000, and we didn't pounds, and we didn't even have a penny to our names. <laughs> We actually humiliated no, no, no. Condoleezza Rice when she came to our city. <laughs> so we actually, we, the headlines in the paper after that demonstration, when Jack Straw had the gall to bring Condoleezza Rice, who was responsible for one, one, Guantanamo Bay and Abu Ghraib, we actually had the headlines in the paper the next, the next day that Liverpool gave Condoleezza Rice the biggest unwelcome since Mosley and his black shirt in the 1930s. <laughs> Blair, Blair Brown and all those people, the Jack Straws of the world, who actually we think we helped to get him the sack from that visit with Condoleezza Rice, they actually tried to manufacture consent but they failed miserably. That was why there was two million of us on the streets. Uh, they actually learned these lessons. They learned the lessons that they can't allow debate. They have to stop debate. And the neocons then, as soon as Corbyn was elected, turned round and set to work. And what they did was to conduct the biggest ever witch hunt anybody has ever seen in any political party in this country. What they did was actually turn down the discussion. They actually gagged and witch hunted and expelled in the most vicious way anybody has ever seen. The neocons learned their lessons and our movement has paid the price. And we do know about what happened nationally. Let me tell you what happened in Liverpool. Not only were our councillors, that they make sure that our councillors were compliant with the neoliberal agenda, what they did when we turned round, we were about to anoint a new mayor in Liverpool. What happened? Starmer steps in. The new mayor was going to be a black woman, Anna Rothery, supported by Jeremy Corbyn and most of us on the left. Starmer steps in, and what does he do? 
discounts the three candidates so he can exclude her because she was going to win, and in anoints, virtually anoints uh, Joanne Anderson, a black woman. What do we know about her? We know that she's a member of the British American Project. What's the British American Project? As John Pilger describes it, it's a CIA front and it's, a mason, it's like a Freemason, a loose organisation of Freemasons. It is absolutely designed for politicians and journalists to suppress anybody on the left. And that's who we ended up as the mayor of our city. We have no democracy in our city at all. And this is what's ahead for all of us right throughout the movement. They are trying to gag us and authoritarianism is the order of the day. Why is that relevant to all? Why is that relevant to all? What may we have in Liverpool? Well, of course, you read in the newspapers last year the absolutely outrageous act of having holding an arms fair in a building owned by the people of Liverpool was, uh, was the event that we had to demonstrate against and call to arms all of the people within the anti-war movement because the mayor and all of the councillors were so compliant, they wrung their hands with crocodile tears and said, oh, it's very sad, it's not really what we want, but we can't do anything about it, which is an absolute lie, an absolute lie. We notified public interest lawyers and they gave us the advice that it was in their own power to stop that arms fair and we had the disgrace, disgraceful situation whereby Liverpool hosted an arms fair in our anti-war city. Terrible. And of course, what are the consequences of war when you get into our communities? Of course, you saw what happened last week where there was an uh, outrageous situation where fascists, some of them were bust in, some of them were just organised within our city, and some of them were just local people dragged into it, where they were actually attacking and trying to burn down a hotel in Liverpool that was housing refugees. And this is what happens when you're pro-war. This is what happens when you build up resentment against people seeking shelter from war. And at the end of the day, we as a city, we stood up proud and we very quickly organised a, a meeting, sorry, we very quickly organised a, 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 a we very quickly organised a massive demonstration to fight, the, to oppose this attack on refugees because our city stands proud and we welcome refugees just as most decent human beings around the country do and that's another consequence of war. <laughs> let's face it, let's face it, the people who banged the drums for war are the very same people who campaign for austerity who deprive our areas of funding so they don't have a future, so that our youths don't have a life, so that there's no housing, so that people are absolutely prone to the poison and the drip, drip, drip of the mainstream media and the right-wing the right -wing press, our councillors, Labour, the Tories, and of course the fascists who are waiting in, the, in the, the corners to absolutely take advantage of that situation. And that's the fight we've got right across the country, not just in Liverpool, every corner of our country because of wars. <laughs> and who is the man presiding over this authoritarianism? over this stifling and gagging of anyone who dares to put forward a nuanced debate on what this war or any war is about? Starmer. And I'm really proud, I'm really proud that me, 
and the Merseyside pensioners caught Starmer scurrying round in a little cafe. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, uh, three million other people have seen it. <laughs> um, but what I did, it went viral. I, when, I, when I challenged him, I think, you know, I have to say, I was really pleased that I challenged him on his pledges, which he betrayed. He ended up stealing the uh, leadership of the Labour Party on. The way he came to our city, a city that bans the Sun newspaper, and yet he reports all the time. I challenged him on the witch hunt. The witch hunt which is silencing everybody, from councillors to MPs, even to the socialist group of MPs who cowardly withdrew their name from the anti-war letter that was drawn up by, by the uh, Stop the War organisation. But I'd say I do have um, one regret, and the regret is the, the point being he, you know, he's got no different, Starmer has no different policies than the Tories. But the one thing that I didn't get to say to him, because I was manhandled by one of his minders, was when it comes to war, you know, which is a fundamental uh, issue as war, there's no difference between the Tories and the current Labour Party, absolutely none whatsoever. So, I really regret that I never got to say that because it's in my DNA. I started my activity through being uh, on the uh, Vietnamese, anti-Vietnamese, the, the Vietnam War, against the Vietnam War, uh, all those years ago. And all I'd say is, we are now living in a one-party state. Absolutely. <laughs> We're living in much scarier and authoritarian, authoritarian times than when we were trying to stop the war in Iraq and the war in Afghanistan. But I'd say to everyone here, the anti-war movement has the power to shine a light towards peace. It always had. And this is why this event is so important. And I hope there's more of them. I'm proud to be here today. I think we've got a job of work to do to break down the lies and the misinformation, and I've never, ever, ever seen the scale of propaganda where you... <laughs> yeah, when the war first broke, broke out, you went to Marks and Spencer's to buy uh, a loaf of bread, and they said to you, do you want to give a pound to Ukraine? And I said, actually, I want to give a pound to Palestine. How do I go about doing it? Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. The people in Ukraine are being murdered. They're being sacrificed on the altar of NATO and America and Europe and all the gangsters that are driving this war. Class. We support the working class of Russia, of Ukraine, of Palestine, of Europe, of Britain and of America who in their basically are anti-war. Everybody's instinct is to be anti-war except for these neocons and the rulers of the world. I'm going to finish on this. My message to Starmer is that the anti-war movement will not be silenced. We won't be brown beaten. We won't be intimidated by their bully boy tactics or their stitch ups. We're here to say, and I say no to war, no to war everywhere, and no to NATO, and let's fight for peace. Bravo. Bravo.